Well, good evening. Whoa, woke you up, didn't I? <laughs> Kathy, oh boy. Well, welcome to the Riverside Township Radio Players May show, our final show of this 2021-2022 season. I'm Jacob Pelka, and I directed this month. And you're in luck because I picked two sad dramas. <laughs> yeah. Smart Alex in the back. No, I picked two comedies to send you into the summer. We want to send you off laughing. Um, so, a little later, you're going to hear the second show is an episode of Fibber McGee and Molly. But first up, we have an episode of Our Ms. Brooks, that classic comedy. The show centered around the antics of 10th grade English teacher Connie Brooks and her pupils at the fictional Madison High School. The plots were simple, but funny as hell. In one episode, a hobo was mistaken for the chairman of the State Board of Education. In another, Ms. Brooks caught a burglar in her home and believing him a reformed character got him a job as the school janitor. Or in the case of tonight's episode, a student's homemade radio causes a panic about an impending hurricane. Connie Brooks was played by that great actress, Eve Arden. Now, for those few of you in the audience who seem to be blessed with more years, or less years, rather, and you're wondering who Eve Arden is, if you've seen the movie Grease, the principal is Eve Arden. And you'll see the connection of why she played the principal and she was the teacher. And anyway, you get it. Gail Gordon of the Lucy Show, Mr. Mooney fame, played the stuffed shirt principal, Osgood Conklin, and Richard Crenna played that gangly pupil, Walter Denton. Has anyone here ever realized that the guy who did this gangly, nerdy voice on this show later on ended up playing John Rambo's ex-commanding officer, Colonel Sam Troutman, in the first three Rambo films? <laughs> that is what I call versatility, ladies and gentlemen. But I digress. Armis Brooks ran from 1948 to 1957. And in 1952, it made a migration to television with the entire cast, often recreating previously performed radio play scripts. And then in 1956, Warner Brothers adapted the concept into a movie. It even had a one-issue comic book. So come with us while we take you back to January 22nd, 1950, for an episode of Armis Brooks entitled Walter's Radio. Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and help stop tooth decay and Luster Cream Shampoo for soft, glamorous, caressable hair bring you Our Miss Brooks starring Eve Arden. <clears throat> it's time once again for another comedy episode of Our Miss Brooks under the direction of Al Lewis. Well, the weather's been pretty nice around Madison High School, where our Miss Brooks teaches English. That is, up until last week. Then the gray clouds cascaded moisture, and the streets danced to the tune of Mother Nature's tears. It was as though some celestial goblet had overturned, caressing the earth with rivulets of heavenly champagne. Or, as we say in my neighborhood, it was wetter than a drowned seal's mustache. The rain started Friday morning, and while I was at breakfast with my landlady, she made a piercingly accurate observation. It's certainly coming down, isn't it? <laughs> it sure is, Mrs. Davis. Great weather for ducks. Oh, I'll bet the farmers are glad, though. Yeah, it should be good for the crops. It'll keep the dust down, too. It isn't the heat, it's the humidity. Now, how did that get in there? Uh, uh, w w would you like another cup of coffee, Connie? No, thanks. I have to get ready for school. Walter Denton's picking me up. Oh, I is your car in the shop again? No, but I wouldn't dare drive in this wet weather with my tires in such poor condition. What's wrong with your tires? I only have three. <laughs> oh, oh, that's Walter now. I'll be just a minute, Walter. 
Will you help me into my rain clothes, Mrs. Davis? Oh, certainly, dear. Uh, here is your yellow slicker right on this chair. Thanks. Oh, and mm. your nice mm. yellow rain hat. Oh. Now, you're all set. How do I look, Mrs. Davis? Simply divine, Connie. You look just like the trademark on a bottle of cod liver oil. Well, don't just stand there. Throw a halibut over my shoulder. And I'll, I'm coming, Walter. Well, goodbye, Mrs. Davis. Goodbye, Connie. I'm sorry to keep you waiting, Walter. What do you think of this weather? Boy, it's certainly coming down. It sure is, Walter. Great weather for ducks. I bet the farmers are glad, though. Yeah, it should be good for the crops. It'll keep the dust down, too. Well, there goes all our dialogue for the trip to school. Now, if you'll help me open this car door, I'll... Walter, where's the top to your car? In my garage. I always take it down in weather like this. You do? Yes, ma'am. It leaks. Oh, well, that explains that we wouldn't want to ride with a leaky top, would we? Might get the rain all wet. Well, get in, Ms. Brooks. I've got this Turkish towel to throw over our heads. Why spoil it? There's nothing like driving in an open convertible and listening to the pitter-patter of raindrops on your nose. The towel isn't just for us, Ms. Brooks. I've got to protect my electrical shop homework. Here, hold it, will ya? I, I don't want to seem nosy, Walter, but what is this contraption? It's got wires and tubes all over it. Oh, that's my homework, Ms. Brooks. What are you studying, Frankenstein 1? No, that's my project for shop. It's an SCR shortwave radio receiver. A radio receiver? Where'd you get it? I built it. Well, that was my project. The electrical shop furnished most of the materials, and, and I did the rest. Oh, that's wonderful. You kids who are going to school nowadays are certainly fortunate. Just think of it, building your own radios. When I went to school, all I built was an inferiority complex. Ah, uh, it, it wasn't so tough. Of course, I had to solder a lot of wires in back there, but, but it turned out pretty good. Hmm. What's this thing sticking out between the tubes that looks like a banana? It's a banana. <laughs> you see, Ms. Brooks, I put my lunch in there to keep it dry. I wish I could get in there. This Turkish towel is getting to be a Turkish bath. Why are you stopping, Walter? Well, I promised to pick up Harriet Conklin this morning, too. Oh, look, look. There's our beloved principal standing next to the house. Well, good morning, Mr. Conklin. How do you like the rain? I loathe it, Denton. Thank you. Well, what's wrong with the little rain? Every time it rains, all manner of weird creatures are washed from their natural habitat under stones and come slithering into my driveway. And good morning to you, Mr. Conklin. Uh, oh, oh, Miss Brooks. Oh, for a moment there, I thought Denton had picked up a hitchhiking halibut fisherman. <laughs> My daughter will be out in a moment, young man. Meanwhile, please remove that junk heap from my driveway. I'm expecting a furniture van at any moment. Oh, what kind of furniture are you getting, Mr. Conklin? It's custom-built Malaika bamboo. At long last, I'm realizing a dream of mine to furnish our little glassed-in sleeping porch as a sort of tropical lanai, a place to which I can retreat from my rigors of my daily routine. Oh, I don't know. I think bamboo furniture's kind of icky myself. <laughs> oh, you do. And uh, what is your opinion of it, Miss Brooks? 
Well, sir... I'm asking your opinion, Miss Brooks. What do you think of bamboo furniture? Well, personally, I'm not too crazy about it. When I want your opinion, I'll ask for it. Hi, Daddy. Oh, good morning, Miss Brooks. Hello, Harriet. Come on, get in. So long, Daddy. Be sure they get the furniture in out of the rain. I will, Harriet. Just to know it's coming makes me feel good all over. My own Shangri-La. Aloha, one and all. Uh, uh, Bali high and gesundheit. <laughs> Would you do me a favor, Ms. Brooks? I don't have shop class till the afternoon, and I have biology this morning, so would you mind parking this radio in Mr. Boynton's lab for me? But why should I go into Mr. Boynton's lab? Well, because you've got 10 minutes before your class starts, and you always manage to sneak in a All little... right, Walter. I'll do it for you as a favor. Oh, thanks, Ms. Brooks. Here it is. Now be careful of it now. I'll see you later. Goodbye, Walter. Hello, Mr. Boynton. May I leave this radio for Walter Denton? It's his shop homework. Oh, certainly, Ms. Brooks. Just put it down on that table. Thanks. He'll pick it up next period. There. Say, that's quite a rain costume you've got on. Oh, do you like it? Oh, yes, indeed. It's just the kind I want. I'll bet it makes a wonderful outfit for halibut fishing. <laughs> There's no use talking. I'll have to burn it. I hope I'm not keeping you from any work, Mr. Boynton. Well, oh, I... Good, good. <laughs> then we can chat for a few minutes. Oh, very well, Miss Brooks. Let's do that. All right. Okay. Well, if it's checked around to me, I'll have to open. Where do you stand on rain, Mr. Boynton? Rain? Well, well, by and large, I'd say that rain is quite beneficial to most forms of plant life. You'll never be investigated for that remark. What I meant was... Don't you think it's rather early in the year for such a cold, driving rain? Oh, not at all, Miss Brooks. Our climatic conditions are undergoing a slow but steady change. It's something of a meteorological phenomenon. Why, well, do you realize that at this very moment the equatorial belt is slipping slowly southward? Well, I'll turn my back and you tighten it up. No, no, no. What I'm trying to say is that the warm weather, which we in the temperate zone have long enjoyed, is moving further south every year. Well, it's entirely possible that in the future our area may be engulfed in icy Arctic weather. How far in the future? Oh, possibly 10,000 years. Good. I should be finished knitting my mittens by then. <laughs> Unless I drop a stitch or two. Come in. Excuse me, Mr. Boynton, but I've got a message for Miss Brooks. How did you happen to look for me here, Harriet? You're kidding, of course. Danny just called and said he'd be delayed with the furniture a while longer and asked me to monitor your class while you sit in his office till he gets here. Well, congratulations, Miss Brooks. What did I do? This makes you acting principal of Madison. That's right, Miss Brooks. I guess Daddy didn't realize what he was doing. I mean, well, all you have to do is answer some phone calls. Well, if you'll excuse me, I've got to stop in at the supply room for a moment. <laughs> that is with your permission, Miss Acting Principal. Granted. <laughs> well, I'll just be a few minutes. I'll see you later. Isn't this Walter's radio, Miss Brooks? Yes, it is. It's a complicated looking thing. Let's see if it works. It's pretty close to our... It's pretty close to our first class, Harriet. We should go. Listen! Oh, this is swell reception. What do you know, Guy Lombardo? Keen arrangement, isn't it? And now, ladies and gentlemen, we bring you a special weather bulletin. Oh, good. Maybe the rain's going to stop. Attention, everyone. 
This is an important announcement. Local weather authorities have just notified us that the barometer is falling rapidly and a hurricane is approaching from the southwest. Miss Brooks, did you hear that? A hurricane! Reports indicate that winds measuring up to 150 miles per hour will strike this area within the hour. Please do not become panicky, but go immediately to places of safety. Mr. Boynton said our climate was changing, but this is ridiculous. Industries will secure all machinery in their plants, and schools will shut down at once. Did you hear that, Miss Brooks? Of course I heard it. I'm listening louder than you are. I repeat, attention every... Well, are you going to shut down the school? I have no authority to do anything like that. Why, of course you have. You're acting principal, aren't you? But you know your father. He'll be furious if I take such a drastic step. I'd better call him. Well, there's no time for that now. Everyone's in great danger. Well, then we'd better ask Mr. Boynton's advice. Come on, Harriet. Mr. Boynton? Mr. Boynton? We will stay on the air and bring you further reports and advice as the hurricane approaches. This is Dudley Harrington speaking to you from station D-U-M. Situated. Situated in the heart of downtown Bombay, India. Colgate Dental Cream cleans your breath while it cleans your teeth. And the Colgate way stops tooth decay best. More than two years research showed the Colgate way of brushing teeth right after eating helps stop more decay for more people than ever before reported in Denifer's history. Yes, the Colgate way stopped tooth decay best, better than any other home method of oral hygiene. No other toothpaste or powder, ammoniated or not, has proof of such results. And you should know that Colgate's, while not mentioned by name, was the only toothpaste used in the research on tooth decay recently reported in Reacher's Digest. Yes, Colgate Dental Cream, and only Colgate Dental Cream, was used in this research. So always use Colgate's to clean your breath while you clean your teeth. And when you follow the Colgate way, Colgate Dental Cream stops tooth decay best. And the Colgate way stops tooth decay best. Well, when Mr. Conklin put Miss Brooks in temporary charge of Madison High School, he had no idea what a crisis would arise in his absence. Not knowing it's from Bombay, Miss Brooks is taking the hurricane report she heard on Walter Denton's radio quite seriously. Well, hiya, Miss Brooks. Did you put my radio in the biology lab? Yes, I did, Walter. I also turned it on and heard a report from the local weather authorities that it's got me in a tizzy, and I don't tizz easily. What is it? More rain coming? Oh, it's worse than that. There's a 150-mile hurricane approaching from the southwest. Well, blow me down. It will if we don't get out of here. I send Harriet into her father's office to call him up at home, and I'm trying to locate Mr. Boynton. Well, maybe I can help you. Maybe you can. And when you find him, tell him about the hurricane and bring him to the principal's office at once. It's no use, Miss Brooks. Our phone at home is still busy. I guess your mother's doing her shopping on the phone on account of the rain. No, mother's spending the day with Aunt Bertha. Mother's her favorite sister, you know, and mother's crazy about Aunt Bertha, too. I guess it's because she was an only child. Your mother's sister was an only child, Gracie, uh, Harriet? Yes, ma'am. She was the only child until mother was born. We haven't much time, Miss Brooks. The radio said... 
<laughs> Here he is, Ms. Brooks. What's all this about a hurricane? It's true, Mr. Boynton. It came over the radio. I heard it, too. The man said it was due to strike this vicinity in an hour. What man said that, Harriet? The announcer. How do you know he meant this vicinity? It's very simple. Mr. Boynton, he said he was quoting local weather authorities. Now, if I'm responsible for the students in this school, I'd better see that they all reach their homes before the storm hits. You mean you're closing the school? Hot dog. <laughs> Miss Brooks, you can't do that. She's got to. But this is a very radical step to take. I don't know if I agree with such a procedure. You seem to forget, Mr. Boynton. I'm acting principal of this institution now. Oh, oh my apologies, Miss Brooks. You're absolutely right. As principal, your authority exceeds mine in this matter. I await your command. At ease. Smoke, if you like. Walter, you tell the other teachers to dismiss their classes in an orderly fashion and caution them of the approaching storm. Oh, yes, sir, right away. Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> Please hurry, Walter. You have to drive us over to Daddy's when you come back. We can't reach him by phone, and he's got to be told what's happening. Okay, Harriet. It's kind of exciting, isn't it, Miss Brooks? We'll all go over together and... All but me, Harriet. As acting principal of this great institution, I feel it's my duty to stay right here and go down with the school. No, no, no. You're going right with us, Miss Brooks. Why, of course you are. You've got to report to Daddy. We'll lock the house up, we'll lock the house up tight and see that every... Oh dear, what if the hurricane hits before we get to the house? What do you th do then, Miss Brooks? What can I do? I'll let it blow and lash myself to Mr. Boynton. <laughs> I hope your dad doesn't mind our barging in on him like this, Harriet. Well, it's an emergency, Mr. Boynton. He'll understand. Come on, he's probably in his lanai. Daddy, I'm home. That's funny, he isn't in here. No, but the new furniture is. Get a load of this bamboo wilderness. <laughs> it is an odd looking room, isn't it? Oh, how do you like it, Miss Brooks? Now I know where old fishing poles go when they die. <laughs> What's that? Well, I brought my radio along, Ms. Brooks. It'll help while away the hours we have to stay holed up here. Hey, care to dance, Harriet? Walter Denton, I'm surprised at you. How can you ask anyone to dance with a hurricane coming up any minute? Oh, I I'm sorry. It was pretty silly, I guess. It was positively inane. Care to dance, Mr. Boynton? You'd better turn that thing off, Walter. I'm going into the next room to see if Daddy's there. That's his den. I don't hear any growling. Well, be sure to tell him we're here, will you, Harriet? Oh, I hope he doesn't get angry because Miss Brooks shut down the school. Why should he get angry? I merely did my duty. Come on, let's all go in. No, no, Harriet, you go in alone. He wouldn't hit a relative. Well, I'll just be a minute. Hello, Daddy. Harriet, what are you doing home? What's the meaning of this? Now take it easy, Daddy. Wait till I close this door. Well, this will probably come as something of a shock to Mr. Conklin. I wonder how he'll react to my closing down the school. Let's keep quiet and listen. What do you mean? What do you mean? She shut down the school! You possibly? Uh, I'm here too, uh, Mr. Conklin. Hello. Oh, hello. <laughs> Miss Brooks, how could you possibly? Hello, Mr. Conklin. Hello. <laughs> Miss Brooks, how could you possibly? Hello, Mr. Conklin. Hello. How could you shut down my school in the middle of the day? But, sir, there's a hurricane coming. We heard it on the radio. Oh, yes, that's right, Mr. Conklin. Harriet told me all about it. There's a hurricane blowing in from the... Shut up! Southwest. 
I've never heard such a batch of unmitigated jabberwocky in all my days. How could a hurricane possibly get this far into the United States? Smugglers? Don't be impertinent, Miss Brooks. Boyton, you always seem to be a person of average intelligence. How could you allow this, this, this mad woman to shut down my school on a ridiculous assumption? But it isn't an assumption, Mr. Conklin. Miss Brooks heard the warning on the radio. So did I, Daddy. And there's no time to waste if we're to get ready for it. Walter, go close all the windows. Oh, yes, ma'am. Denton, come back here. This happens to be my domain. I'll give the orders here. Oh, yes, sir. Go close all the windows. I just don't want the rain to ruin things. No hurricanes, indeed. But, Mr. Conklin, we heard... I was... don't want to hear any more about it. Oh, it's too late to call the students back to school, I suppose. But if anything like this ever happens again... Please, Daddy. Miss Brooks, turn on the radio. Maybe there's another weather report coming on. That'll convince them. Right, Harriet. Heavy rain, squalls, and extreme turbulence. All citizens' attention. The following precautionary measures are urged by local authorities for the protection of life and property during the approaching hurricane. I said I don't want to hear any more about... Who said that? Well, the man on the radio, Daddy. Listen. Please follow these emergency measures to the letter. First, precautions against flying glass from wind-shattered windows. Board up all windows. I repeat, board up all windows. Did you hear that? Well, don't just stand around like a bunch of dummies. We've got to board up the windows. Oh, luckily I've got my toolkit handy. I was going to saw some wood for the fireplace. The most secure method of boarding up windows is by using bamboo shoots. I repeat, Board up your windows with bamboo. Bamboo? Where in the world are we going to get bamboo? Oh, oh no, 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 no. Not my new furniture. <laughs> well, this is an emergency, Mr. Conklin. You, you heard it yourself. But, but I haven't even had time to sit in it yet. Well, take a fast bounce on that couch and we'll start chopping. Oh. Oh, no, 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 one moment, one moment. Let me just, let me just sit down for one moment. Oh, oh adieu, little couch. Time's up. On your feet, Mr. Conklin. Here's the toolbox. Mr. Boynton, let's get started. I hate to do this, sir, but you know the necessity. Oh, I'll turn my back. I can't bear to watch. Would you like a bullet to oh. bite on? Oh. Oh. oh, good work, Mr. Boynton. You've sawed that coffee table right in half. Oh, things are bad enough, Miss Brooks. We don't need a commentator. I'll give you a hand with the couch, Mr. Boynton. Pass me the axe. Brooks, I've got all the windows shut and I... Holy cow, the hurricane's already hit. We're cutting this bamboo to board up the windows, Walter. Oh gosh, I've been missing all the fun. Hand me that axe and stand aside. Never mind that, Walter. Take this bamboo strip I've tacked together and nail it up against that window. Well, yes, sir. Uh, give me the hammer and a nail, Harriet, please. Here, Walter. What was that? Don't look now, Mr. Conklin, but you can pick flowers without opening your window. Oh. Quiet, everybody. Some more instructions are coming over the air. Be sure to shut off all water pipes and latch down your ox carts. <laughs> ox carts? New cars must be scarcer than we think. Instruction number three. Attention, everyone. Disperse all natives to the hills. I repeat, after cautioning them to tie down their thatch roofs on their straw huts, disperse all natives to the hills. What natives? Good question. And now, 
Your last official instruction. Before you repair your storm cellars, be sure to tether your elephants carefully. Remember, tether your elephants carefully. Well, quick, quick! There's not a moment to lose! We've got to get outside and tether my elephants and... Elephants? <laughs> Mr. Boyden, did that man say elephants? Well, I thought he did, Mr. Conklin. But who keeps elephants? Ever hear of Sabu? This concludes our station broadcast until after the hurricane has passed. Good luck to you all from your friendly station, D-U-M, situated in the heart of downtown Bombay, India. Bombay? India? Well, that... <laughs> that's a good one. <laughs> the joke is certainly on us. We've been worried about a storm that's 5,000 miles away. <laughs> Can you imagine that? 5,000 miles. Oh, this is a scream. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's a panic. <laughs> imagine. Closing down an entire high school and wrecking a room full of furniture because of a report on some idiot's homemade radio telling of a hurricane 5,000 miles away! Calm down, your high blood pressure. Your concern for my blood pressure is touching, Miss Brooks. But I'd rather you concern yourself with what I'm to do about these slivers of bamboo you've left me with. Please, Mr. Conklin, you can make a fortune with those slivers. A fortune? How? When the flying saucers land, you can clean up selling bamboo canes to those little men. <laughs> Eve Harden returns in just a moment. But first... Tonight, yes tonight, show them how much lovelier your hair can look after a Luster Cream shampoo. Luster Cream, world's finest shampoo. No other shampoo in the world gives you K. Dalmet's magic blend of secret ingredients plus gentle lanolin. Better than a soap, better than a liquid. Luster Cream is a dainty cream shampoo. Leaves hair three ways lovelier. Fragrantly clean, free of loose dandruff, glistening with sheen, soft and manageable. Even in the hardest water, Luster Cream lathers instantly. No special rinse needed after a Luster Cream shampoo. So gentle. Luster cream is a wonderful, even for children's hair. Tonight, yes, tonight, try Luster cream shampoo. Dream girl, dream girl, And now, once again, here is Eve Arden. If you are concerned about the threat of communism, you should know this fact. The Crusade for Freedom, an organization headed by General Lucius Clay, needs your financial and moral assistance in the support of Radio Free Europe. This is a private radio station now working to bring to communist-dominated European countries the voices of their exile leaders. Help Radio Free Europe by joining the Crusade for Freedom in your town. This is Vern Smith reminding you to tune in next week for another Our Miss Brooks show, brought to you by Luster Cream Shampoo for soft, glamorous, caressable hair, and Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and help stop tooth decay. Don't touch that dial. The Riverside Township radio players will return in just a moment with Fibber McGee and Molly. But first, the cast of tonight's episode of Our Miss Brooks. This is RTRP, the Riverside Township Radio Players Network.
All right, what did you think? Keep the applause going. <laughs> or start it up again. I really hope that you all go out tonight and brush your teeth and shampoo your hair. I hope that inspired you. And fight communism, too, while we're at it. They really packed a lot into those shows. And by the way, if you're a light sleeper at night, you can still catch reruns of the TV version of Our Miss Brooks on the Decades TV channel at 3 a.m. <laughs> for any of you restless sleepers. And it's pretty good because this show was redone for TV and it's neat to see how they translated it. So um, if you're ever up, that might put you to sleep. I don't know. So the cast of tonight's show, the voice of Radio D-U-M, our own dumb Jayden Bayan. <laughs> the pitch man, Vern Smith, and our sound effects expert, as always, Marty McNulty. The well-meaning but a little light-headed Harriet Conklin was played by Zoe Zero. <laughs> Connie's landlady, who stayed home the whole episode and watched the rain outside, Ms. Davis, was played by Allison Bayan. <laughs> and our announcer for that show was Andre Dixon. A man of average intelligence, I mean good intelligence, Mr. Boyne was played by Jay Summerfield. <laughs> and of course, gangly Walter Denton was myself, Jacob Pelka. <laughs> <laughs> and the blustery, bamboo-loving principal, Osgood Conklin, was played expertly by Mark Fazio. And that witty star of our show, Connie Brooks, was, of course, played by Ellie Bobka. So we're going to take a quick pause here to reset ourselves. We hope you will, too. Get a drink of water, stretch the legs, do a little dance, find some shampoo, and we'll see you back here real quick for our final show.